is Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2. The Bible says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You are going to pray and say, Father, cause your word to be mixed with faith in the inside of me. And let your word be profitable to my life in the name of Jesus. Turn there to pray and talk to God. Father, please, cause your word to be mixed with faith on the inside of me. And please let your word be profitable in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for bringing us into the ninth month of the year. The first eight months are gone and you have been faithful. Father, we say thank you. We are now in the ninth month all to your glory and honor and we are returning all the glory unto you. We know it is not by our doing that we are still standing, but it is by your grace and by your mercy. And for that, Lord, we must return all the glory to your name. Lord, as we proceed into the remaining days of this year and into this, your word, Father, please be with us. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our ears to receive from you. And open our hearts to receive you with all openness, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So we commit this word into your hands. Father, speak to us in the way that we will hear you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And let your name and your name alone be glorified. Thank you, our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about a scary topic this morning. Amen. And the topic is fasting. Hallelujah. It's scary. It's scary. Isn't it scary? It's not scary. Because anytime you say fasting, somebody's stomach is going to grumble. Even if they're not hungry. They just go. <laughs> but we're still going to talk about fasting because we, we have to. Amen. So this teaching is about an acceptable fast. An acceptable fast. Only one person said, hallelujah. I told you it was scary. But you need not be afraid. Amen. Let your mind be at peace. Fasting is for you. Amen. Glory be to God. Turn your Bibles with me, please. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 14 to verse 21. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 14 to verse 21. Are we all there? Say amen if you're there. Okay, five people said amen. If you are not there, say wait for me. I can't wait too long. I don't have a lot of time. Matthew chapter 17 from verse 14. The Bible says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and so vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples that they could not cure him, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and it departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, 
you shall say unto this mountain, remove ends to yonder, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and what? Fasting. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So there is a kind that can go out by prayer. And there is a kind that cannot go out by prayer alone. Hallelujah. There's a kind that you must add fasting to the prayer for them to go out. Praise the Lord. So there are some things that prayer alone cannot handle. We must add fasting to it for the prayer to be potent enough to handle it. Hallelujah. So, beloved, there are times we need to add fasting to our prayers. Amen. The amen went low. There are times we need to add fasting to our prayers. Say amen. amen. I will add fasting to my prayer. Oh, you didn't say it like you meant it. I will add fasting to my prayer. Uh -huh. Praise God. You know... This verse 20 and 21, based on what Jesus said, he said because of their unbelief, that demon could not go out. And then the very next verse, he said, this one does not go out except by prayer and fasting. In other words, any believer who does not fast is practicing unbelief. Are you with me? You believe, right? You are a believer. Oh, come on now. Then you must fast. Fasting is a sign of your faith. Amen. Amen. To show that you know and you know your God will do something. Hello? I told you I was going to teach you about this. Right? Because our 21 days started yesterday. It's not too late to join. But you will do double because you're late. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Praise God. So what is fasting? Because the doctrine of fasting has been, uh, let me use this word lightly, polluted. Amen? It has been polluted. Now people will tell me, I'm fasting from my favorite show. In other words, I won't watch this show for like two weeks. That's fasting. Please, where in the Bible does it say that? Show me. Where in the Bible does it say, when you fast, stay away from your favorite show, that's your fasting. Right? We use all kinds of things to now, to, to define what fasting is. Let me tell you what fasting is. Fasting is staying away from food for some time. Amen. Amen. Staying away from food for some time. Hallelujah. Let me, should I repeat it? No? Staying away from food for some time is fasting. Some people will say, I'm fasting my favorite food, so I will eat something else. It's not fasting. You don't fast your favorite food. You fast from food, period. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So now we know what fasting means, right? Are you sure? Some of us are looking at me like, what is this man talking about? Stay away from food? Are you crazy? No, you, you can't stay away from food. Hallelujah. And I'll show you why. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7. The Bible says, don't be an idolater. In other words, an idol worshiper, as were some of them. Because all they do is, the people sit down to eat and drink and rose up to play every time. Did you, did you get that? Anyone that all you do every day, you rise up, you eat, you play. You rise up, you eat, you play. You rise up, you eat, you play. There is no fasting. The Bible says you are an idolater. 
And I don't think there's any idol worshiper here. At least you came to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So you are not an idol worshiper. But it's not me that I said it before you start looking at me somehow. Look at your Bible whether it's there or not. Amen. Glory be to God. You know why? Because their flesh is their God. When the flesh is the God, the flesh will rule everything. When the flesh say, I want hamburger and cheeseburger and fries, you will quickly get out and go get it for the flesh. When the flesh say it is ribs today, you go get it. Pound yam, you are ready. Amala, you are ready. Everything, you are ready. That is idolatry. You are worshipping your body. You are worshipping your flesh. Amen. But when you fast, you tell the flesh, ah, you are not the God of me. I serve the living God. Therefore, today, you are not eating until whatever time you decide to fast unto. Are you still with me? You know that on a normal day, you can skip breakfast and you'll be okay. On a normal day, you can even skip lunch and you'll be okay. You are not fasting. You, just, you are just busy and you didn't get to eat. You'll be okay. But the day you say is a fasting day. <laughs> uh, the flesh will fight you. The moment you wake up, it will tell you, feed me, feed me. And your stomach will be grumbling and, and you will know that day you have not eaten. You know why? Let me show you. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Uh, let me read it from verse 6. Romans chapter 8 from verse 6. The Bible says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot do what? Cannot please God. If we are always feeding the flesh, we remain in the flesh. And the Bible says if we remain in the flesh, we cannot please God. You know why? You are serving another God, which is your flesh. Are you with me? Amen. Praise God. What fasting does, it brings the flesh under subjection. Fasting reminds the flesh who is the boss. Amen. Fasting makes the presence of God to be closer because your spirit is more alive when you fast than when you are always eating. Fasting makes our prayers to be more potent and more powerful. That was why Jesus said this kind does not go out except by Fasting and prayer. And fasting humbles us before God. And when we are humbled before God, our prayers will be answered. Amen. I'll show you all these scriptures. I just don't have a ton of time. Hallelujah. Now, when you are fasting, you must ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, is the fast ordained by God? Is the fast ordained by God? You must ask yourself that. Hallelujah. Number two, you must understand the motive for which you are fasting. Why are you fasting? You must understand it. Amen. Number three, what is the specific need that you are fasting for? What is the specific need that you are fasting for? Number four, what result are you looking for when you fast? What result? Are you looking for when you fast? 
And number five, are you determined to minister unto the Lord while you're fasting? Or are you determined to minister unto yourself? Go and study Acts chapter 13. There you will understand what I'm talking about. Amen. Now, in Isaiah 58, if you go and read it from verse 1 to verse 12, again, because of time, I cannot read all these scriptures today. Isaiah 58 from verse 1 to verse number 12, the Bible teaches us what an acceptable fast is. And what is not an acceptable fast? Isaiah chapter 58 from verse 1 to verse number 12. And in that scripture, the, the Bible mentioned 26 benefits of fasting. 26. To break the bands of wickedness. To set the captives free. To give your bread to the poor. 26 benefits of fasting in Isaiah chapter 58. Go and study it. Hallelujah. So there are benefits to fasting. And even phys physicians have said that when you fast, it's a way to regulate your body system and get rid of diseases. They've said it. He said, we cannot be just be eating all the times. There are times that you say, you know what, I'm going to fast. So they said, intermittent fast. Is that what, what they call it? Intermittent. Uh -huh. English speakers are talking. Intermittent fasting. Amen. That once in a while you don't eat, it will cause your body to detox. So fasting is good for your body. Amen. Don't let your stomach deceive you by making that noise. That, oh, if you don't eat, you will die. You won't die. If you overdo it, that's when you can start to, you know, have negative uh, things. So you don't overdo it. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Praise God. Now, the Bible teaches us about different kind of fast. Different kind of fast. The first one is a one-day fast for atonement. One day fast for atonement. And you, you can read about that in Leviticus 23, verse 27. Leviticus 23, 27. Um, I know during Sunday school, Elder mentioned, you know, when you read Leviticus and you read all these Old Testament laws, you wonder, thank God for Jesus. But there are still good things in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. And before anybody said, oh, fasting was in the Old Testament, is not in the New. Go back to the scripture we started from. Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast. So it's a matter of time. So even in the New Testament, you must. In the New Testament, we must. Hallelujah. So Leviticus 23, 27, the Bible says, And on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. And it shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls. Afflicting your soul means stay away from food. In other words, fast. And offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Amen. And if you look at Jeremiah 36, verse 6, Jeremiah 36, verse number 6, the Bible mentioned the fasting day. The fasting day. Somebody say the fasting day. When is your day of fasting? You got seven days in a week. What day do you say, you know what, today, this day is my day of fasting. You say, you know what, I'm not going to eat breakfast, I'm not going to eat lunch, because this day is my day of fasting. So when is your day of fasting? Hallelujah. If you don't have one, you better find it. Amen. So we got one day fast 
for atonement to be cleansed before God. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? You know, there's one day fast for battle as well. One day fast for battle. Ezra chapter 8. I'll just read verse 23, but you can read from 21. Ezra chapter 8, verse 23. And I, I believe we know what Ezra went through, right? He said, so we fasted and besought our God for this. And he was entreated of us. In other words, we fasted and cried out unto God. And God heard our cry. By fasting. By fasting. By fasting. If you read the previous two verses, Ezra said something. He said he proclaimed a fast. Right? Right? So that he will not have to go and ask for help from earthly kings. Please read the scriptures. He said he proclaimed a fast. So he will not have to go and ask for help from an earthly king. Because if you ask for help from a man, man will take the glory when the thing happens. But when you fast and you ask for help from God, God will take the glory even if he uses the man to help you. So in other words, don't rely on man. Rely on God. Hallelujah. How many people know 2 Chronicles 7.14? You know it by heart. Right? You know what it says. If my people, which are called by my name, shall what? You know that word humble is not you bowing your head. That word humble means stay away from food. If my people will fast, that's what it means. And pray and seek my face. He said he will hear you and answer you. Because fasting humbles us before God. All right. Are you still with me? One day fast for battle. In the book of Judges. Judges chapter 20. From verse 18 to verse 35. I, I, I will just paraphrase what happened in chapter 19 and then chapter 20. There's a tribe called the tribe of Benjamin. And there was a Levite who was traveling. And in his journey, he stopped at a place that is where the tribe of Benjamin are. And a particular man invited him and his wife. To come into his house. And he went and stayed in their house. But the Bible says there are some children of the devil who are there. And they came knocking on the door of that man. And they say, send him out to us so that we can know him. You know what I mean by know him, right? It's not just shaking his hands. They want to know him. Uh -huh. Like Abraham knew his wife. Uh -huh. They want to know him. And the man begged them and said, ah. These are my visitors. Please don't do this to them. Let me give you my daughter. And you can do as you please. They said, no, we want him. The man now decided that he will send his wife. I don't know why he did that, but that's what he did. He probably didn't love her like himself. Hallelujah. A different story for another day. I know the women are looking at their husband like, will you send me? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Will you dare send me? <laughs> this man sent his wife. And they did to her whatever they please all night. So the man, the next day, the wife was by the door, took his wife and continued. When he got home, he cut her in 12 pieces and sent each piece to each tribe of Israel. There are 12 tribes. To let them know what happened with the tribe of Benjamin. And to say this is an abomination in the land of Israel. So the remaining 11 tribes, they now gathered together and said, this evil cannot remain. We must go and deliver justice. And they asked 
the tribe of Benjamin, give us those children of the devil that did this so that we can kill them. So this evil can be done away with. And you know what Benjamin said? No. I will not give them up. And they said, well, give us these people. They are the ones that are causing evil. And Benjamin said, no. And you know what they did? They now went to God. Lord, should we go and fight with our brother? Should we go and fight them for this evil so we can cleanse the land of this evil? And you know what God said? God said, yes. And they said, who should go first? Out of all the tribes. And he said, ah, Judah should go first. And Judah said, yes, we got them. Judah went to fight Benjamin. They killed over 20,000 from Judah. So the ones that committed the crime overpowered the one that is trying to deliver justice. They came back. They cried. Ha, ah, Lord. God, no go shame also. How can this be? We are the righteous one. Lord, should we go back again? And you know what God said? Go. God can be funny. God said go. And another tribe went. And what happened? Benjamin defeated them again. Ah. They now came back. Something is not right. The Bible now said, ah, let, me, let me read you the scriptures. I'm not, I'm not telling you I'm not telling you fables. Amen. All right. Let me, let, me, let me read. Verse 26 of Judges 20. Verse 26. Judges 20 verse 26. The Bible says, Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept. This is after they have lost twice. And sat there before the Lord. Now look at what they did now. And fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. The first two times they did not fast. They just went to battle and they were defeated. But they now came back and said, ah, okay, something is not right. We will fast. They waited on God for one day. Now, look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. They now came and said, Lord, shall I go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Or shall I cease? And look at what God said. You know, God has been saying go before. Go. God now said, and the Lord said, go up for tomorrow. I will deliver them into thy hand. The first time, God did not say, I will deliver them into your hand. The second time, God did not say, I will deliver them into your hand. The moment they fasted, God now said, I will deliver them into your hand. You see what fasting can do? Ah, they're not done. Come to verse 35. Verse 35. They were not the one that even had to fight now. The Bible says, and the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. The Lord, he now arose in his almightiness and smote the Benjamites before the children of Israel. Before they had been fighting on their own. And what happened to them? They lost twice. But this one time, now the third time, ah, we will fast. And the moment they fasted, God is the one that I fought the battle for them. <laughs> Glory be to God. That is why you never go to battle without fasting. Amen. Go and study this part of the scripture very well. Amen. I don't have a lot of time to dissect it today. But the point is, you go to battle without fasting, you are fasting by your power. Amen. But you go with fasting, God has gone ahead of you. Glory be to God. Now, there is also three-day fast for crisis. You can see that in the book of Esther. You all remember Esther, right? Yes. Queen Esther, they replaced Vashti. 
Vashti misbehaved, didn't want to listen to her husband. So ladies, li- no, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> she misbehaved, and they kicked her out of the palace. And Esther replaced Vashti. But there was a man called Hitman. That's his name, right? He's not Hitman. But he was a Hitman in this particular story, right? Anyone that wants to commit murderer, especially mass murderer, is a Hitman. His name was Heyman, but removed the E, put the IT, became a hitman. He wanted to kill all the Jews. And Esther said, let us fast for three days. Three days, nobody's eating. Even the animals will fast. And what did God do? God delivered them. If you find yourself in a crisis, fast for three days. Cry to God for deliverance. He will deliver you. I said he will deliver you. In the name of Jesus. There is also a 21 day partial fast. Daniel did this twice. You remember the book of Daniel? He fasted for three whole weeks. You can go and read Daniel chapter 9 and Daniel chapter 10. And you will see the two places where he fasted. And he fasted for revelation. He fasted for God to reveal his secrets to him. So the book of Daniel became the book of revelation of the Old Testament. Because Daniel wrote about what is to come at the end time. That the book of revelation now corroborated. Did I say that? That's a big word. Your pastor is learning. (laughs) Hallelujah. So the book of Daniel is the book of revelation of the whole testament because he fasted and God revealed what is to come in the end time to Daniel. Hallelujah. It is also in that book of Daniel, while he was fasting, that the angel came and said, Daniel, since the day... You have been fasting. An answer was dispatched from heaven. But the prince of Persia withstood the answer from being delivered. You know what that means? Ah, I don't have time. The enemy can hold on to your answer if you give up too soon. Daniel waited for 21 days. From the first day, the answer came. But Daniel did not keep quiet. Second day was fasting and praying. Third day was fasting and praying. Fourth day, I just said, wait, 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 why is this boy disturbing us? Uh, Papa, God, have you not sent answer to Daniel? God said, I've said answer. Oh. The answer went from the first day. Why is he still crying? They now investigated. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The angel we sent to deliver the answer had been withheld. They now said an archangel. To go and deliver him. So that that angel can now bring the answer to Daniel. So beloved, I pray your answers will never be withheld. But until you see results, you must continue to pray. Bombard heaven. God is never too tired of you praying to him. Are you still with me? Fasting. You can also fast to avoid judgment. Are you with me? You can fast to avoid judgment. How many people know who Ahab is? King Ahab. Uh, Somebody said wicked. It's because when you open the dictionary and you look for Ahab, next to his name, you see wickedness. Because he was a wicked man. He married Jezebel. Hallelujah. He killed a man just so that he can take over the vineyard of that man. And he was the one that was supporting all the prophets of Baal. So he was wicked to the highest order. I mean, a man that marries a witch. What can become of him? Hallelujah. The man is wicked. The woman is a witch. Witchy and wickedness. Put them together. What do you get? Evil times five. (laughs) 
So that was Ahab. But you know what? Ahab fasted. First Kings 21 verse 27. First Kings 21 verse 27. When God pronounced judgment against Ahab, this was a wicked, wicked king. The Bible says, and it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes, put sackcloth upon his flesh, and did what? Ah, how I wish he didn't fast. <laughs> then again, I'm a man. Because I would have cut off his head. But he fasted. And lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how he have humbled himself before me? Ah, thank God I'm not God. Thank God God is God. God that can even be merciful to the wicked. Because this wicked man fasted, God now said, look at how he humbled himself before me. Because he humbled himself before me, I will not bring the wickedness to come to pass in his days. He now pardoned Ahab. Thank God I was not, I was not there. And I said, Lord, let us take care of this one. <laughs> we'll cut off his head and the evil is over. But God said, no, no, no. He fasted. He humbled himself before me. Now, if a wicked man can receive a pardon by fasting, you, that you are not wicked, you, that you are not a witch, when you fast, will you receive? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. If God can be merciful to Ahab, because Ahab fasted just one day, just one, one is not enough. I would say for every wickedness he has done, he should fast forty days. After he has fasted for forty years, God can now have mercy. But that's me. I'm a man. But thank God, God is God. Mm -hmm. he, would not, he would not see evil in his days. Ha! Ha, God. There are some questions we'll ask when we get to heaven. No? We'll ask God, God, why, 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 why did you? Because you see righteous people die early and then wicked people, they live to 120 and they continue in their wickedness. Why? Anyway, let me move on. There's also 40 day fasting. 40 day dry. 40 days dry. When you don't eat any food for 40, say it now. Don't worry, I'm not asking you to do dry fasting for 40 days. Some of you will say one day alone, your stomach is already gripping you. You know, in the entire Bible, there's only three people that fasted 40 days dry. And they did it for dominion. Jesus Christ. When he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil came and tempted him. You remember that? The second person was Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead. But before he fasted 40 days, you know what he ate? Angelic food. The Bible says angel came and baked him a cake and, and they said, eat because the journey is far. And he ate. They didn't say that one is not enough. They fed him again the second time. Eat. You'll be all right. And he ate. And the Bible said he went on the strength of that meal for 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb. So if angels did not feed you, And you are not Jesus Christ. <laughs> Be careful doing 40 days dry. No, because some of us, we can get over zealous. You want to please God. You will now declare 40 day dry. Hmm. If you are not Christ, angel did not feed you. And you know the third person was Moses. And you know where he did it? 
on top of the mountain in the presence of God. If you are in the presence of God for 40 days, you won't need food. Hello? You will not need food. So unless you are in his presence for the entire 40 days, my own suggestion is don't attempt it. What do you want to dominate anyway? Our father in the Lord, Pastor Adeboye, he does it regularly. And you know why? He's in the presence of the Lord at all times. That's why he can fast for 40 days. And you won't even see it on his face. Fasting should make you lose weight. He's gaining weight. That means something is feeding him there. Because physically it doesn't make sense. I've seen people that tried this and did not make it. I'm being honest with you. It's in the Bible, but it's not meant for everybody. You don't go doing 40 days fast without any food, without anything. Your organs will shut down. Amen. Fasting is abstinence from food for some time. He didn't say for eternity. Man shall not live by bread alone, but you must still live by bread. Uh, don't say, I didn't want you. <laughs> Praise God. And please, don't make fasting a bondage. You know what it means to make it a bondage? When you begin to show, Elder Mutu, last year, I fasted 100 days. Where were you? <laughs> the moment you... St- in fact, don't let anybody know you are fasting. Don't disfigure your face. Don't say, I won't brush my teeth because I'm fasting. Brush your teeth. We don't want stinky breath in church. <laughs> Amen. Put on perfume. Look good while you are fasting. Don't do your... And they ask you what is so they can ask you what is wrong. Oh, it's because I'm fasting. Ah, no, don't let... Let your face be radiant. Look handsome and beautiful while you are fasting. So nobody will come and ask, oh, what is wrong with you? Oh, you start going, oh, oh. no, don't do that. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody know you are fasting. It's between you. Uh, you got it. Oh, don't tell people, oh, I fasted. I did dry 21 days. You have received your reward because you did it to show off. So now that you have shown off, have you not received? You have received. So fasting is not meant for us to boast about. Do it humbly. Amen. Are you still with me? Glory be to I need to wrap up because my time is gone. Ah, thank you, Jesus. So we're doing 21 days. We started yesterday. It's not dry. Oh. Hello? It's not dry. You can break at six. If you are new to fasting, you can break earlier. It is not a bondage. Look, your heart matters to God than anything. Amen. If you have never fasted, this is your first time. Let me tell you, 6 p.m. will look like an impossible task. So if you have never fasted, don't wait till 6. If they ask you, who said it? Say, Pastor did. I give you permission to break at 1. Amen. For the first week. (laughs) The second week, you break at three. Because you are allowing your body to do what? To adjust. By the third week, you break at six. And that's it. Hallelujah. So let's not make it, you know, like we we are held in a cage because we are fasting. No. We're not. Your heart matters more to God than what goes or does not go into your belly. And there are some exceptions. I shared it last week. If you're over 70 years old, with all due respect, don't fast. We don't want you to go yet. We agree to 100, right? So if you're over 70, you don't need to. You're all right. We'll cover you by prayer. Amen. Is that all right? We don't want our elders to go yet now. Uh huh. Praise God. That's one. Number two, if you are pregnant, don't fast. Amen. 
I don't care what your faith is. Don't fast if you are pregnant. We don't want early delivery. We want you to carry the baby to full term. Uh -huh. Praise God. And number three is if you are on medication, there's a health issue and you must take medication with food, don't fast. Unless you know and you know in your heart you can do it, then you do it with wisdom. Hallelujah. So we're not meant to take this and make it a bondage I must wait until 6 p.m. No. God is on the throne. He will hear you. Hallelujah. Are we clear on fasting now? We know what fasting is. And thank God for my wife. She pleaded for the husbands of the women that are pregnant. <laughs> because I was going to make them wait for double the time. Actually, it should be triple. One for their wife, one for themselves, and one for the baby. And if the, baby, if the woman is carrying twins, ah, it is finished. <laughs> Fast for the rest of the year. <laughs> But she pleaded. She said, oh, Pastor, please be merciful. So well, you still do 21. But you will double your prayer because you must now add your wife's prayer to your own. Right? And that's what we are going to do over the next 20 days now. So if you have not joined the fast, it is not too late. Amen? Is that all right? Yes. Glory be to God. I want us to rise up on our feet because of time. Because fasting is something that every believer should do. This fast, fasting is something that all of us should do. So just pray one prayer. And the prayer is, Lord, strengthen me to fast in the name of Jesus. Because we must fast. Father, strengthen me to fast. Strengthen my body. Strengthen my spirit to wait upon you and to fast, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Talk to God right now. Strengthen me to fast, Lord. Strengthen me to fast. Strengthen me to fast. In the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise, our God. We bless and magnify your name. Thank you because you have heard us. Glory and honor be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless and magnify your name. Thank you for fasting. Thank you for leaving us a legacy where which we can be strengthened and empowered spiritually. So Lord, as we embark on this 21 days of fasting, we ask Lord that it shall be a fast that is acceptable to you. It shall be a fast, mighty God, that will bring glory to your name. And it shall be a fast, Lord, that will uplift us as your children. In the name of Jesus. So as we wait for this 21 days, Father, we ask for strength. Strength to wait. Strength, mighty God, to look unto you. To cry unto you. To pray. So that it is not a hunger strike. In the name of Jesus. And may your name and your name alone be glorified. Thank you because you have heard us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. God bless you richly. In Jesus' mighty name. All right.